Hey guys, it's Sebastian here from Noble Frugal Studio, here to teach you all you need to know to get started making animations in OpenTunes 1.4. This tutorial is meant for those who are unfamiliar with OpenTunes, those who wanna brush up their knowledge on the basics, and even those who are new to animation in general. My goal is to give you all the knowledge you need to know in order to start making animations in OpenTunes. So if you have any questions, be sure to follow the link in the description to my Discord channel. There, you can navigate to the questions channel where the community and I will be more than happy to help you out with whatever you're struggling with. Those of you who are new to the art of animation in general, you're gonna wanna stick around because I have a great video coming up on how you can get started animating digitally, even on your phone. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, you all came here because you want to make animation. So let's just do that. Let's make some animation. It is recommended that you use this program with a drawing tablet or a drawing display like I'm using. Um, you definitely can draw with a mouse. However, it may be more difficult to make more pleasant looking artwork. Okay, let's get started by making a new scene. When you open OpenTunes, you're gonna get an OpenTunes startup window just like this one. If you don't have the window or you hit the little X button, then hit Alt-S and you'll get it right back. Okay, so we're gonna create our scene in the sandbox project because this is where we can store all, all of our test animations and rough drawings and practice and stuff. If you're making like a dedicated film or an episode of an animated series, I recommend you make its own unique project by hitting new project so that all the assets for that specific project can be stored within one folder. We're gonna leave that alone for now because we're just getting acquainted with the program. So select sandbox from here. It's most likely selected by default. Let's give our scene a name. Let's name this uh, tutorial. We're not gonna change what it's saved in. We're gonna select our camera size. It's gonna be 1080p, which is what it is by default. Um, your units probably won't say pixel, so select pixel from this drop-down menu. The frame rate we're gonna to set to 24, which is the default, and then we're going to hit create scene. Now that we're in, let's go ahead and start drawing. To do that, we need to create a new level. Now hover over to this thing called the X sheet over here and you see these columns are listed. These are gonna act as our layers. The levels on the other hand are what hold our drawings and they're placed inside of these columns. Think of the levels as like a comic strip containing all of your drawings or frames and the columns are like the layers that we organize them on. Hover over to one of the columns, right click, new level. Let's give our level a name, always name your levels. Uh, I'm just gonna name this test. Always name your levels, not joking. Down at type, we're gonna hit Tunes Raster Level. And I would set the width and height bigger than your camera size. So we set the camera size in the opening window. We set it to 1080p, um, that's 1920 by 1080. I'd set it to the, something a little bit bigger than that so you can draw outside of the camera box. Um, I set mine to 4000 by 3000. Do be mindful though that if you have a lower end computer, then this will affect your performance. Hit okay. All right, now we have a level on column one. I think I forgot to mention that the columns to the right will appear above the columns to the left. So this is sort of like layer one and layer, this is layer two and this is layer three and so on. Okay, now let's get acquainted with some of our tools. We have the most important one, which is the brush tool and it works how you think it would. To undo a line or a stroke, you can hit control Z. If you want to edit your brush's parameters, hover it over to the tool option bar located above your viewer. If your drawing device supports pressure, you can set the minimum brush size and the maximum brush size. So mine does. When I press hard, it's going to make a big stroke. And when I press lightly, it's going to make a small stroke. So I'm going to hit the small stroke pretty, pretty small and get this big one very big. So we can get a nice range of size. You can also set the amount of smoothness that you want in your brush strokes, but it will cause a little bit of latency. So I'm gonna put it like five and see. Now it's a little bit smoother. There's a little bit more latency. I like to keep it around five or around 10 just to get really smooth lines. And finally, you can make presets to save your favorite brush option combination. So hover over to here, it's on custom right now. Hit plus, add a name. I'm gonna say default. Okay, and now we're on our default brush. You can switch between presets like this. For all the many mistakes that we make as an artist, we have the eraser tool. It's located right here on the tool bar, or you can just hit E on your keyboard. If that doesn't work for you, then you can go to file and edit configure shortcuts, type in eraser, 
or brush and set the certain keyboard shortcuts that you want. So we have the eraser tool. It works how you think it would. Just erase right here. Control Z that. Um, you can edit the size right up here in the tool option bar. We can make a very big erase. It's going to cause some latency. Put that down a little bit. Something you want to pay attention to is this hardness slider. Um, our hardness is at 100 right now, so it'll erase everything we ask it to. But if we drag it down to, say, 40, um, put the size up a little bit, it's going to have a, a softer effect. I don't know if you can see that. Let me make it a little more dramatic. So if you drag it to 40, as you can see, it's almost like it's brushing it away with an airbrush. So that's what the hardness slider does. So definitely useful when you're having you have more sketchy drawings. You can also set the mode to erase lines, areas, which is your color, your the color we're going to add soon, and lines and areas, which, which will erase lines and color. It's good that they separate these because in animation, it can get pretty complicated. If you want to get rid of a line, but not the color beneath it, you can do that, which is awesome. We're talking about color so much, so let's just add some. We have two options. I'm going to start with the bucket tool because the bucket tool is pretty much self-explanatory. Um, to create a new color, because we don't want to fill this in black, if we click, it'll just be black. Um, like our lines and we don't want that so in order to create a new color we're going to hover down to this level palette right click new style then we can use this color picker over here to select the color we want I'm going to make it sort of this purpley blue very unsaturated then all we have to do is hover over to where we want the color to be and click and our color will fill in of course we have different types of fill we have like we have rectangular fill we have freehand fill and we also have polyline fill, which will let you select the fill using lines. Double tap in order to finish the fill. I'm going to keep it on normal. We can also choose to fill in lines or areas. We can do lines and areas if we want to as well. And the great thing about OpenTunes is that after you fill something, you can always change the color after by going to the color picker. Next up, we have the paintbrush tool. This is one of my favorite tools to use because I tend to draw in a style that doesn't close all of my lines. So the fill bucket tool will end up filling the entire screen and that's not really what I want. So if I select my color tool, I can just manually color in the area that I want I can color in the size. And of course we can do lines and areas or just lines as well. Here's an example of coloring in the lines, making them purple. Lines and areas will just cover over everything. If we go back to the erase tool, after we've added some fill, we can choose lines and areas which will get rid of everything just areas which will get rid of just a color and lines which will just get rid of the lines now that we got drawing down let's get to the animation part of this navigate over back to the x sheet click on the frame below your first frame or if you want to use a horizontal timeline say you're coming from flash or toon boom click this button right here and your timeline will be made horizontal there's also separate rooms such as timeline which will give you a horizontal timeline if you prefer to work that way Click on the frame below the first frame you made, or if you're working on a horizontal timeline, the frame to the right, and hit Alt-D. Now that we've created a new drawing, which you can also do by just selecting the frame and then drawing with your brush on it, we're ready to create the next frame. However, to create this next frame, I need to see the frame that I drew before it in order to draw this one correctly. So what I'm going to do, right click, activate a onion skin. Now the onion skin is showing three drawings right now. If I just wanted to show one, I can deselect these by clicking on them. All right, now that we're on frame two, we can draw our next frame. If you want to correct a drawing, you can hit S on your keyboard or come over to this cursor right here, click on it, and then we'll be able to select a section of our drawing and change it. From the drop down menu, select, it's gonna start on rectangular, which will select things in a rectangle. You can select things in polyline, which will select with lines. But the one I find most useful, especially if I'm using a drawing tablet, is freehand, where I can just draw the selection that I need. So if we play our animation, it's pretty rapid, and if we loop it, um, that doesn't, that's not really what I was going for. So let's put some space between our first frame and our second frame. So click on the first frame and you'll see a little tab appear. Drag that down. I'm going to drag it down to say 10. Actually, let's go a little further. Let's go to 15 and then below two so that this frame doesn't play instantaneously. When we loop the animation, 
let's drag this all the way down to 30. And now when we go back to the first frame and hit play, it happens a little later. If you want to quickly retime your animation, click and drag down this column, right click, reframe, and I'm going to put it on twos. That way we can make the animation and then retime it later. Let's add a frame in between our first frame and our second frame. But in order to do that, I need to see both frames at the same time so I can draw the in-between correctly. On the onion skin chart right here, let's select the second frame as well. Now when we create a drawing here by going to our brush tool and drawing on the layer, we'll create a new in-between frame where I can see both drawings. If I want to disable one of the drawings, I can just click on the onion skin node. Also, if I don't want to see the onion skin anymore, I can just right click and select deactivate onion skin. Also, if your onion skin isn't transparent enough, go to file, preferences, onion skin, and set the paper thickness higher if you want it more transparent. I want it very transparent, so I'm gonna put it around 90. Let's put it a little higher, maybe 99. There we go. To flip between frames, I believe, by default, you can use the bracket keys, but mine is set to something different. In order to zoom in and zoom out, you can press the plus and minus keys. I recommend assigning this to one of the shortcuts on your drawing tablet or drawing display. We're going to make our character move in an arc because that's the natural way that us as humans move. So we're going to make the in-between somewhere around here. This is where the head's going to be. As long as you have your characters moving in arcs, your animation should be looking pretty good. All right, now that our animation is finished, I'm going to space out these frames by click and dragging down on this X sheet, right click, reframe, for us. Let's see how that looks. Pretty good. As of OpenTunes 1.4, you've been able to drag and drop MP3 files into OpenTunes to add sound to your animation. OpenTunes can also accept WAV and .AIFF audio files. So if MP3 doesn't work, you have some backups there too. In order to add audio, all I have to do is go to the folder that I have the audio in, click and drag it onto the X sheet. I'm going to, so you can hit load or import load. We'll load it straight from where you dragged it from. I'm just gonna hit load. If you hit import, it'll create a copy of the file in the OpenTunes directory. And I don't really need to do that right now. It may be helpful for some of you guys if you're making bigger projects, but not for me right now. Um, you can click and drag on this right column and to play a section of the audio, or you can also play just how you hitting play. If no audio is playing for you guys, hit this little musical note icon right here. That'll disable it, and then if you click it and it has a blue outline around it, it is enabled. If you have a microphone connected to your computer, you can also record audio into OpenTunes. So let's go to Windows and record audio, or you can hit Alt-A. 
I have my Blue Yeti microphone connected to my computer, so I'm going to hit record, and then I'm going to hit stop. After that, just save and insert, and then it'll insert the audio into the X sheet. Okay, now that our animation is finished, I'm going to click and drag to select the whole thing. That's a left click, um, right click, hit reframe, go to fours. That way it'll space it out nicely. Now when we play our animation, it goes at a pretty good speed. I'm going to click and drag this tab down just to make the first frame last a little longer. And I'm going to do the same thing with the last frame. Also, if we wanted to make another layer, say a background, all we have to do is drag this column up, right like this one, click and drag it, and then we create a level beneath it. Now anything we draw on this background layer, let me get off this paintbrush tool, will appear behind our first drawing. Note for the background to last for the entire animation, I'm gonna click on the frame that I drew it on, drag the tab down all the way to the end of our animation. Now that our animation is done, let's export it to a video file. Now, OpenTunes natively supports exporting AVI video files, but if you want or need to use MP4s or GIFs, head over to the video linked in the card after you watch this. I'll also include it in the end screen and the description so all devices can access it. Go to Render, click Output Settings. Give it a name, I'm gonna leave it as Tutorial. Click the drop down menu next to Name, scroll up, click AVI. You can choose the save location. Right now it's gonna to save to outputs, which is in our OpenTunes directory. So I'm just gonna leave it right there and I'll show you how to get to your OpenTunes directory as well. Just so you know, depending on where you installed OpenTunes in your computer, your OpenTunes directory will be in the location that you installed it. Okay, really quick, how to get to your OpenTunes directory. Usually if you installed OpenTunes and you didn't set a separate directory to install in, you're gonna to go to local disk C, and then you're gonna go to OpenTune stuff. I have multiples, don't, don't worry about that. Go to OpenTune stuff. And then since we made our project in Sandbox, it's gonna be in Sandbox. Then go to outputs, click this to see all of your outputs. After that, we just hit render. Well, there you have it. Now you know how to make animations in OpenTunes. So you're probably wondering why it's so complicated to do simple things in OpenTunes, such as making a layer or adding color. For one, animation is a very complicated process. And two, if a software tries to simplify something that's complicated, like animation, that usually means it doesn't support the more advanced features for more complex projects. OpenTunes has t loads of features for all your professional animation needs, so it goes very deep and it gets kind of technical and complex at times. If you want to learn more about some of these features, check out my other videos, and if they help you, then consider subscribing. I hope this tutorial helped you. If you have any questions, follow the link below to my Discord server. With that said, I sincerely hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and it helped you learn something. That's all from me, guys. I'll see you later. Peace.